Retina 3C, small C. This one fell off the fell off the tripod apparently. Doesn't close. Doesn't want to close. Doesn't want to open properly either for that matter. Focus is quite stiff. Certainly unhappy. Well, better find out what we can do with this thing. For a camera that fell off a tripod, it's not showing many scars. I can only think it fell off a tripod onto uh, a carpeted floor, perhaps. I see that the, the accessory shoe is a bit stretched from having something forced in there. Well, I think we'll have the top off to start off with and see, work our way down to it, find out what's going on. Does it wind and fire? Yeah, there was some suggestion there was a problem in that regard. That doesn't feel nice. Shutter doesn't release. Okay, that's not a good sign. Anything to see under the top cover? Can't see, oh, I can't really see anything there. I've certainly seen a lot uglier cameras than that. The strap plug at this end is a little bit bent, but that's not uncommon. Let's take that screw out of the meter. And there should be one here too. I'll just sort these bits into the containers for cleaning because that's probably the next thing to do. Does the meter work? Yes, it responds to light. That's good. Off with that. Off with that. Let's have a look. Is there a problem with the shutter release here? Nothing apparently wrong there. Okay. I think I'll remove the lens and shutter assembly from the camera. It had a funny feel to it. Put the shutter aside for a second. Check this film advance again. Well, the film advance cocks and would release normally there. The shutter looks a bit sticky at this point, just at the slow speed that returns. But that certainly looks like it works. What's this piece of rubbish here that's fallen out? Film chip? Yep, yeah. that could have been jamming something up. And the shutter. Well, that's jammed. That does not look happy. Okay, something seriously wrong there. What could have happened? Oh. Will that rack go back? I'm just seeing if I can cock this by hand. Yes. So the shutter cocks by hand. It certainly wasn't cocking in the body. 
What about this here? Is this, this the problem? That moves. I'll put the shutter back in. We'll see if we can get any result from it. Let's get that roughly in the right position. So about there. Oh, that doesn't want to stay open. Oh, look there. This is certainly all bent. That top of that shroud's bent out of place. That doesn't want to stay up. And the shutter didn't cock. Okay. Well, it looks like most of our problems are here. So that's going to require a bit of stripping down to get to that stage. I'd probably better get to it. Have the range finder off. Oh, well, I thought I thought I was going to have the range finder off. Those screws are very very tight. That's one loose. That screw head's got a bit of an unpleasant look about it. Let's have that strap lug off. I mean the uh, rewind shaft off. I'm going to have to strip this right down really to get to the shroud assembly in here because that's obviously what's jammed up. I'm looking at the shutter cocking rack here. Those teeth are a little bit distorted but I think they'll, they'll be usable. That rack has got a funny look about it. It's pushed all the way back here. And that tab there it should be bent up at 90 degrees, it's not. Uh, okay. We know it suffered some trauma. That tab should be bent up at 90 degrees. The fact that it's not is a bit suspicious. Just put that shim washer to one side where I can find it. And just keep burrowing into this camera. So it's hit the ground, it's made, it's certainly damaged this part here, the shroud, the lens standard that comes out the front here is not seated correctly. Right, get that screw out. Hopefully this will come down to one or two key pieces that are bent slightly out of shape and which are preventing things from moving normally. I think that's probably our best, best hope with this one. There's no spring on that. We'll have that out. Return spring off here. That's the release lever that releases the film advance to allow you to wind on, or the shaft for the release lever. Right, let's flip it over. The end of the base. And that leatherette patch is glued on remarkably well. I'm 
not going to hazard a guess as to whether that's been off before in the last 60 odd years or not. 65 years probably. And the owner of course will want to know if this camera is ever going to fly again. Well, we don't really know that until we've got it all the bits and just made sure that there is nothing of a very important nature that's cat catastrophically failed. I'm sure if it came to it I could find another body to put most of the components into if the body casting was damaged. But I don't think that's the case. Right, this leatherette is likewise stuck quite well. And I'm fortunate here that this is on a chromed brass trim so it will come off easier and if it was stuck to the aluminium because it, it ten, tends to stick better to the aluminium unless there's been some corrosion in which case it doesn't stick very well to the aluminium at all so the al exposed aluminium would be right in these areas here and we're all working on the chrome trim around the outside so Got a slightly sticky feel to it, the adhesive. Uh, I'm just going to put a little drop of naphtha on my scalpel blade. See if that slides under there easier as a result. Now that cracking sound is certainly the, the adhesive breaking away from the aluminium body here. This naphtha, you could say it's acting as a, uh, a lubricant here. It's helping my scalpel blade slide in underneath the leatherette in that getting between the leatherette and the camera body. I don't know whether it's softening the adhesive directly. I, it seems to be happening too quick for that to be the case. I think it's just acting in a, as a physical lubricant to help the uh, blade slip underneath. This is going very well as leatherette removal goes. It doesn't always go as smoothly as this or as quickly. Okay, that's fine. So that leatherette's off. You can see corrosion here on the aluminium body. And that's what was mo that was what was going letting go with a crack. That was the adhesive cracking away. Let's have this off. So this chrome trim is held in place with about seven screws. The screws are fairly well disguised from the adhesive, the corrosion and the remains of the, uh, the back of the leatherette stuck on it. I think I got the full set. Yes, I did. All right, we'll remove our lock lever and the release lever. And I'll just recover the spring from that release lever before I do anything else. 
because it's easily damaged and I don't have lots of spares. Alright, the rewind button can come off next. I've got a pair of pliers that will do that for me. Oh, that was tight. The springs I don't put through the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, some of them you'd be asking for trouble. They'd fall out of the holes in the basket and get lost. Or get caught on things and get damaged. Out with that sprocket shaft. Out with the sprocket. Here's the guide bush for the top of the film advanced shaft, here's the clutch. Unhook the spring here from the catch that holds the rewind button in. Let's spring over there. Oh, that screw there. Here's the back catch, uh, rewind button catch, we'll have that. Three screws will hold this in place. This is the guide bush for the um, film advance shaft. That screws loose. That screws loose. That screws loose. Let's recover those screws. Remove the take up spool. I want that bush out for the ultrasonic cleaner. Now we're getting to parts that don't work. Focus is stiff, it's very reluctant to move. The front doesn't want to fold. Okay, so let's have the door off the front. Hinge screw, hinge pin screw top and bottom. And there may well be a washer, a spacer washer under there, either at the top or the bottom, sometimes both. There's one at the bottom. There's another piece of film. There's another spacer washer, that one's at the top. So we've got our door off. Now these arms could quite conceivably be bent. They, they don't look 100%. We won't know till we put that back together whether that's causing a problem. I certainly can't see anything particularly wrong with it. No, the shroud is bent here because it sticks out too far. That catch there doesn't want to catch into it properly. Let's take this shroud off from the Let's just collapse that front. Is it going to collapse? It doesn't want to fold, does it? Yeah, there's certainly something wrong here. I'll support that with my finger from underneath. Remove those two chrome-plated brass screws. They're easily damaged, so you need to be quite careful with those. This looks a bit damaged. It's got a some sort of nerk in it there, a big bit of a dent. We'll see what that's like afterwards. That focus doesn't want to move, that's really quite not that's unhappy. Alright, let's take that screw out there, that's the screw on the arm that moves our rangefinder. That's part of this arm here, and that arm there doesn't look, that's sitting at a funny angle. Let's get those two screws out. That's not flat. That's not flat across there, it's bent, it's quite bent. Um, yeah, that's not, not good. 
the focus is a bit crunchy, there's a bit of grit or something in there. It's moving reasonably smoothly now, meaning that this was a problem. This, this piece being so distorted. The, the, the front, does it want to close now? Yeah, it'll, it, yeah it, it's, it's, you can hear that crunchy sound. It's not happy about closing, but it does close. Okay, so have they, the focus apart, I suppose. Now, normally I just mark these across where the outer and the inner are level with each other, which is at about what point? Well, it is about there. And I'll scribe a line across that. Normally I scribe two lines across the bottom. one at the top and this helps me make align the inner and outer helical and align the focus scale ring to the outer helical so we'll remove these four screws This camera would have been in need of servicing regardless of the little accident it suffered because I can see that the grease is all hard and dry and sticky and uh, it would have been causing issues. Those four black screws hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. The four flat screws here, the countersunk head screws, they hold this retainer ring in place. Let's gather these screws up. Here's their retainer. That should lift out. It does. That's their inner and outer. They're a bit sticky. Ah. And we have four screws that hold the focus mount into the front standard. The nickel plated ones. Those parts can go into the cleaner. Now I want to remove this whole shroud and front standard from the, the body. Those screws are tight. That one's not. That's no, moved the whole bush down. That one's come out. This screw holds the bracket for the transfer shaft that takes the action from the uh, cocking rack at the back through to the shutter at the front of the camera. Need a hammer on these ones I think. Let's give this a drop of naphtha that might help those screws loosen up a bit and a bit of a bit of a tap. It's loose. That's loose. You only need to give them a tap. It's just tap them while you're applying some torque to the screwdriver. It's just like using a uh, an impact driver on your motorbike. Guaranteed to move the screws. Let's take these three screws out of our tripod socket. And the tripod socket and the screws can go in for cleaning. That's just the bush that supports the bottom of the uh, film cassette. 
Right, so we've got the screws out there. This one screw hasn't come out because the whole bush has pushed out inside. We'll get that out. Right, so now, tip this all out. There's our transfer shaft. I'm looking to see if it's bent. It doesn't look bent. That's good. Here's the body. Now there's a bit of grit and rubbish in there. Nothing, nothing dramatic. It's certainly not a bad example. Just checking the action of the back door catch. Here's that bush that had fallen out from this plate. It's always the one here at that corner because it's got almost no metal around it to support it so it comes loose very easily. Okay, so we'll remove this. That's the shutter release piece. I'm just checking that to see if it's loose. No, it's good. And if I press in the buttons and push this all the way through, that should come out. We have our two return strings for the buttons. And our two buttons. Here's our front standard. Let's remove its return spring. And two screws hold this on. Now that's quite stiff. That doesn't return to the up position very easily by, by itself. But even with the aid of the spring it would be reluctant. That'll be just sticky with old oil probably. Might be a little bit bent. I'll have a look at it from here. I reserve judgment on that one, it doesn't look too bad. So this piece and the shroud here. There's another film chip. They're great for getting into places and jamming things up. That slides forward reasonably well. There's a bit much space, it's a bit much rattle. You can see there's a lot of rattle in this, this way. So this, this shroud here is bent up. It's bent up in the middle and that's where that button didn't want to click into place properly either. Probably the same at the bottom. Just apply a bit of body English, we'll see if that'll make a difference. No, it's certainly tightened up. That's taken that play right out. That was just, uh, just applying a bit of pressure here and here. I think what had happened is that the front effectively was forced in and the buttons effectively forced the shroud out here at the top bending it. Now this has got a bit of dirt and grit and dried grease in it so I'm going to clean all that and then see if I can get it to run nicely. Meanwhile, these pieces can go into the uh, degreaser and then onto the uh, ultrasonic cleaner because they're very sticky. Well, I'll start putting this back together. All the parts are all here clean now. So we'll just see if this will behave since I've straightened up that shroud. It may do. There may be other faults here that I haven't picked on yet. That certainly moves quite freely. I'm just going to lubricate that with a bit of graphite powder in a minute. But first I'll put its return spring in place. Now that's come off the screw head. I'll get that screw head started and get the spring in place. I think I can do that. It's 
It's always tricky getting this spring started if it's come off the screw. That'd probably do it. That's fine, now I'll do that screw up. That's very positive in its action, so as I say I will lubricate that with a bit of graphite powder. <laughs> 